Uh, I'm calling to order the Monday, March 14th meeting of the Conestoga Valley Board of School Directors. Can you please uh, get start with attendance? I'm sorry. I, I do this my way, different each time. That's okay. okay. Seven directors present. Uh, Mr. Dillman and Mr. Hurst are absent. Okay, we do have a quorum. Will you join me in a pledge of yes, pride? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'd like to welcome you all to uh, this evening's meeting. We appreciate you being here. Uh, I need a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any noes or abstentions? If not, we'll move on to the superintendent's comments. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, March begins our hiring season. As you may be aware, the candidate pool of quality candidates is not as deep as it once was, with the number of people earning a teaching certificate in Pennsylvania consistently declining. There's been a 66% drop since 2010 mm. from just from 21,000 certificates issued to just under 7,000. As such, we try to get an early start knowing other districts are facing the same shortages. Okay, but now for the good news. I have the privilege of introducing two of our newest CD candidates who will be voted on as part of the superintendent's report tonight. Both bring positive energy and life experiences in serving our at-risk populations. I'll start with Janira Cirillo, who will be joining us mid-semester as one of our high school emotional support classroom teachers. Next year, she will shift to our newest verbal behavior classroom in Brownstown. Janira spent seven years as a personal care provider in an autism spectrum disorder classroom before she earned her degree from Grand Canyon University and began teaching in that same special education arena. As for a CV connection, it was her classroom in the school district of Lancaster that Andy Graybill visited to get a better idea how verbal behavior classrooms properly functioned as we set up our first two classrooms at Brownstown. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Janira Cirilla. Uh, it's an honor to be a part of the Conestoga Valley team. I'm looking forward to continue to grow and, um, and get to know everyone as well. We welcome you. And Charles Ulrich is a special education teacher in the Coatesville Area School District. He may be familiar to some, notably Mr. Talley, as Charles is heavily involved in the scouting program. And Mike's son is working on his Eagle Scout badge right now, or honor. This Lebanon Valley College grad earned his undergrad and master's degree in music education and performance and a special education certification from Immaculata and has been teaching students in a special education math classroom for the last seven years. We are very happy to have Mr. Ulrich join us to start the new school year when August comes around. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Charles Ulrich. Hi, it's nice to meet you. Thank you so much. I'm very looking forward to uh, making the transition to Conestoga Valley from uh, Coatesville and serving um, students in the nearby communities in which I reside. So I'm looking forward to August and thank you for the opportunity. Welcome. That's all for tonight, Madam President. Are there any more comments on district activities? If not, this is the first chance for the public comments. Is there anyone from the public who would like to address the board at this point? If not, then I'm going to call on Dr. Smith and Dr. Metzinger for the high school report. Well, good evening. Thanks for having us tonight to present. Normally, we would present in April, um, but we switched with Leola um, just because of some transitions there. So we were able to, to put something together for you this evening to focus on some programs that we're offering. Um, so we'll have a bunch of students that will come up in and out of the presentations um, that we'll give when, in, as we uh, focus on some of these programs. Dr. Z, if you can go to the next slide. So there's a couple different programs that we're going to um, focus tonight, uh, being RTII and study halls, what we've kind of done. And our overall theme was really looking at creative ways that we can support students throughout the pandemic and just changes that we've seen. Some of these are old programs that we just revamped. Some of them are brand new programs that we've added just this year. Um, so again, just try to be creative with the times as we've gone through. So talk about RTII and our study halls and what we've done to in increase that capacity. Uh, Learning Lab, which is our after school tutoring program that meets on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Link Crew, um, which is a program that we have to help transition ninth grade students, uh, eighth grade students into ninth grade. Uh, Unified Track, 
and being a champion school and our benchmark program. So we'll talk about each of those programs individually. And Dr. Metzger is going to talk about RTII and study halls. So the first program that we'd like to highlight is a revamped program. We've had RTI services at the high school for several years now. Um, but we are really looking at how we can provide additional supports to students who may be in our study halls or who are struggling in different uh, classes. And in addition to that, would just like to get involved in some other activities in the school. So what we did is we currently have a one full-time teacher and three paraprofessionals in the media center and RTII center, which they are combined. And we've been able to provide tiered academic and social emotional supports to students grades nine through 12. So some of these interventions include literacy and math interventions, lunch groups, peer tutoring. We've been able to provide some <coughs> counseling workshops and then build in some character strong activities, which is part of our uh, social emotional curriculum this year. Our RTI coordinator, Jen Paolo, runs bi-weekly failure reports to determine what support students need. And then if students don't need a particular support, we've now built into some activities that they can choose, such as book study groups, working on puzzles, tutoring other students, and um, even playing board games, cards, different challenges, cooperative learning activities. So we have a short video on some of the um, students and um, some of the teachers that were unable to be here tonight that talk a little bit about RTII and study hall. I will get it. I really will. <laughs> I have faith. Hey, good for you. <laughs> Plus, Josh is in the back. That's <laughs> not it. Josh, do I have to get out and come back in? Is it embedded in the presentation? Mm -hmm. There we go. <laughs> Hi, 
Hi there, I'm Mrs. Paolo. I am the RTI coordinator here at the high school and newly appointed study hall monitor extraordinaire. <laughs> We've been really trying to make a lot of changes over here and providing different opportunities and supports for students. So we've been um, using some of the RTI supports and doing some grade monitoring, running um, grade reports for students so they can see missing assignments and trying to help them improve their grades in um, each of their classes. We also have been working with counselors and having them come over and do some sessions with students about transcripts and mental health resources. Um, and we are also working towards trying to provide some additional social opportunities for students through gameplay and puzzles um, and we're also working with our CDG um, esports team and setting up some cute computers in the RTI center so students can um, play some of the esports games and try to recruit um, to help grow that program as well. So obviously we've, we've always had study halls. This is kind of study hall 2.0 where um, you know, Dr. Metzinger and Mrs. Paolo really came together and said, what can we do to enhance it? What can we do to provide, you know, we had a ton of students that were sitting in study halls and, and a lot of them doing nothing. So that grade report that we run every week is really, we can identify students to say, hey, you're failing classes, you have a bunch of missing assignments, let's go over here, we're gonna help you get caught up and so forth to provide that support. Um, and then you just saw some of the other fun things that they're doing to provide some mental breaks and, and um, you know, be able to engage students. <laughs> yeah. We're testing your abilities tonight. The work is awesome. Do you want to start talking about learning? Yeah. Mm -hmm. While you're working on it, we'll, we'll start talking about the learning yeah. lab a little bit. So this, the second program that I wanted to talk about is our learning lab. It is an after-school program for remediation that occurs on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 2.40, right after dismissal, till about 4.10. Um, and in this time, students can now uh, pick up a snack which is provided through our lunch program, and then attend a tutoring session in our library from 3 to 410 with teachers. And we currently are expanding quite a bit, so we now have a teacher representative from all of our core subjects. Mm -hmm. Uh, transportation is provided, and one of the other areas that we're really looking into building or exploring is a virtual tutoring option. And that goal is to remove some of the barriers that students may be experiencing having to watch siblings or not able to attend a tutoring session right after school. So I'd like to introduce um, Cindy Fuentes Perez and Ariana Baez Colon. They're going to give their perspective and a little bit more info on the learning labs. Uh, so a frequent problem that I face, and I know multiple other students face, is that it's harder to focus when doing work at home. So I like that Learning Lab provides an appropriate workspace where you can also get help if needed. Yeah, and <clears throat> another thing that Learning Lab provides is like snacks, which like some students like when like after school they want like something to eat, so snacks like help them, um, like help them get like, you know, like into the learning habit of doing their work. <laughs> and it's like good because it's like super late and, you know, it's kind of harder to think when you're on it, like when you're running on an empty stomach. So. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, guys. Thank you. <laughs> We'll do a little bit of musical chairs back and forth here with a couple different people. So, all right. Go ahead, Dr. G. All right, next one we want to talk about is Link Crew. So, again, Link Crew, um, just to give you a little bit of background, is our um, 
I'm doing Linker, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> um, is um, a program that we have where we train upperclassmen um, throughout. We have some teachers that are trained. We train upperclassmen to be able to provide this program. And again, it's to help transition eighth grade to ninth grade. We've been trying to use those link leaders more throughout the school year. Um, and so this is one way that we've been able to do it. Um, with our Character Strong program, what we saw was we had a homeroom that was all assigned to, we call management teams, but homeroom, um, where all of the link crew students were assigned to. So what we did was we broke up that, that kind of management team, and we started pushing out some of the upperclassmen to be able to help the teachers deliver their character strong lessons. So now the link crew leaders go into the ninth grade, um, and they're the groups that they had when they um, worked with them over the summer in terms of transition. So we're building better um, you know, bonds with, with those ninth grade students that they have an upperclassman that they can go to. Um, and they're going into those classrooms and co-teaching um, you know, with, with those lessons at this point. So that was a change we made about mid-year. We just saw that we needed a, a need for that. Um, this Character Strong program has been, you know, we've been um, kind of, open and receptive to teacher feedback and student feedback um, as the year has gone on to try to continually to improve it. Um, so I'm going to let Michaela Johnson, or Michaela, sorry, Michaela. I always say Michaela, Michaela uh, Johnson, Michaela, sorry, um, talk about um, her perspective of, of being involved with Link Crew. Um, so yeah, when we first started Character Strong, it felt kind of like a lecture, like another class. Like we had to schedule around um, to go through a bunch of slides and watch the teacher try to get students to participate. Um, Character Strong wasn't like building, like reaching a goal of building community and character at CBHS. Um, but then when Link Free started going to the freshman man management teams and doing Character Strong with them, it really felt completely different. Um, it feels like it's like actually kind of working. Um, <laughs> um, it's a work in progress. Yes. <laughs> um, and so, like when we go to the care to care strong with the freshmen, two or three of us are on each management team. Um, so we have like two or three groups of like no more than ten students. Um, and so it makes it easier to make that connection with the freshmen um, and with each other and to build relationships. And everyone's more open to answering questions. And like my group, they've given like really vulnerable and thought out answers. And like I, I didn't even expect that. Um, and they just really seem to like Character Strong a lot more. I've, I've had some of them say that. Um, and my sister, she's a freshman, and <laughs> she told me that she feels more comfortable and safe in the small group um, versus like the whole class. Like she'll, she, mm -hmm. she doesn't like to answer questions, but she does when she's in the small group. Um, and she also felt that she's been able to make a real connection with her link crew leaders um, and that she can go to them for help or guidance with like her classes or, um, Wondering what, like, we did course selection. Um, she actually talked to her link crew leaders about what could she take next year and stuff like that. Um, so I really feel like Character Strong has gone from being like a lecture to more of a conversation. And I think it will really make an impact at CBHS. Mm -hmm. I think one of the other things we're seeing, too, is, is Makai is a perfect example of we're building leadership capacity within our students at school, um, that we're, we're putting some of this on them to say, hey, we know that, that you guys can be leaders and, and help um, you know, build the culture at the school. And so that's been really neat to see them step up and, and take some of that leadership responsibility off of the staff. So. What grade are the link leaders? Uh, 11th and 12th yep, grade. 11th and, 12th grade. Mm -hmm. yeah. and we are just starting the selection process. They apply. Um, and they will go through a training this May and prepare for orientation then in August. And our hope is then that they will transition into our incoming ninth grade management teams and build some more activities throughout the whole year next year. Gotcha. And we'll have two additional, two additional staff members that will be trained this year. Yes. So because of the pandemic, um, the um, company that um, you know, runs Link Crew has not provided leadership training. Um, in, in person and, and really nothing online, you know, some general training. But we'll have two new um, teachers that are trained this year um, that will be able to, you know, kind of continue to just improve that program. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, just sign a couple of your buddy. All right, um, next one is Unified Track. So we've done Unified Track in the past. This is a program through Special Olympics, um, basically dedicated to promoting um, social inclusion through different sports. Um, they have several different sports that you can do. Um, most of the schools in our area either do Unified Track or Bocce Ball, um, seeming to be the two main ones. There's others too, right? Um, tennis. And there's tennis as well. 
Um, so with that, we have um, regular ed students that combine with students with special needs uh, to be able to provide this, this unified track team. Um, and so um, again, because of the pandemic, um, the past two years hasn't really been running. So we're looking forward to kind of bringing this back and, and making it more robust. Um, there's some uh, you know, things that we have to navigate through as we go through it. Again, because of the pandemic, um, Josiah will talk here in a second about um, you know, some of the changes that we've had to make and so forth. But we're extremely excited about, about bringing this back and, and again, partnering um, you know, regular ed students with some of our students with special needs. So you can go to the next one. Um, one of the other things is we, this year, uh, will be a training host site for the 2022 Special Olympics. Uh, it was supposed to be this weekend, but the snow kind of uh, changed that. So dates to be determined as we move forward. But essentially, we'll have athletes that will come from all around the area to be able to come to CV, um, and they'll provide training for those athletes um, you know, onto what, what is expected for each of those sports. Um, so like I said, it was supposed to be Saturday and Sunday, but the snow kind of ruined our plan. So we'll work with them to uh, be able to reschedule that. And then I'm going to turn it over to Josiah Dillman. Uh, no relation to Mr. Dillman. Um, this is the, the, the different Dillman family. Um, so um, I was like, man, is your dad going to be there? He's like, wrong, no, wrong family. <laughs> so, um, and he's going to talk a little bit about um, the club and his involvement with that. Yeah, so um, the purpose of the club is just to bring everyone in the school together, including the regular education and the special education, because it seems like the special education, they don't really get the opportunity to interact with like regular education as much. And so during the club, we can just have time to not just make a friendship, but a genuine bond just together and spend time. And sometimes it's just the smallest things that make their day like a joke, like why the chicken cross the park? <laughs> to get to the other slide. Wait, uh, <laughs> <laughs> <and, laughs> Josh back there like <laughs> stealing um, that one. <laughs> and in the club, our officers, uh, we have four regular education students along with four other special special education students. And all together, we partner up and just run the club together, and it goes good. And our, we just had a fundraiser called the Polar Pop, which is related to the Polar Plunge, but we don't live by the ocean, so we can't really jump in the ocean. <laughs> so we had a fundraiser for three teachers to get a balloon of freezing cold water popped over their head, and Dr. Smith came in second, so he'll get a balloon of cold water dump on his head someday soon. <laughs> and Unified Track, I believe, starts tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And they have practices, I think, twice a week, and meets, and that's all. Okay. And then the final program we're going to highlight, um, and we'll slide out of here and let um, Will and his crew come up. So um, I, uh, we've talked about Benchmark before, about how we um, wrote a grant this year, um, and somebody stepped up um, from the community to be able to, um, for us to provide the Benchmark program. Um, so we wanted to have Will and his team, as well as some students um, that have been participating in Benchmark, come up and talk. So I'd like to introduce Will Kiefer, um, this executive director and founder, and also with him tonight um, is Tavon Seals, who has been working with our students here um, at the program. So we'll ask them to come up. Reese. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I'll let them go first. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Thanks for having us in. It's very special to be a part of what you're doing here at CB, and particularly at the high school. Um, my name is Will. I'm the executive director of Benchmark. I'm here with my teammate Tavon and two of our students, um, Reese and Lexi, just to talk a little bit about our work. So Benchmark's been around since 2014, but it's changed over the years to kind of meet the needs of the students we serve. Our overall mission is to flip the script for written off kids. So we take kids who have a certain narrative that's been told to them, whether they believe about themselves, and through fitness-based mentoring, kind of help them flip that to take a strength-based approach to their life. We could click through this slide. We go off of three core values. We focus on being authentic, and that's really for Tavon and I as, as instructors. Um, and we're certainly very open with our students. We do what's difficult because for a lot of our kids, uh, traditional mentoring practices don't work. 
it takes a much longer term approach and maybe some innovative strategies. We also encourage our kids in their lives to do what's difficult, so to not take the easy path. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, flipping the script, um, changing what they believe about themselves um, and turn to change what other people believe about them. And really what we're working towards through these afternoon and evening sessions um, within the Conestoga Valley uh, weight room is we work on behavioral issues. So kids come to us because they're exhibiting uh, problematic behaviors in school or in the home or in the community. Many of them are not attending school, so part of, part of our program is to get them back into the building, and then if they're not on track to graduate, make sure that we can support them in getting back on track. And again, many times what starts in the gym branches out into other programs that are already existing within the district and within the building. So uh, we just use the gym as a tool to open them up and to encourage our kids to get the resources that are already there. But at this point, um, what's most interesting is to talk to Tavon and Reese and Lexi about their experience in the program. All right, well, like I said, I'm Tavon, Open Gym Coordinator at uh, Benchmark. And me and Thomas, a student from FNM, and Matt, another student from FNM, we run like the program out here for after school. So basically, everything he's talking about for our, our program in the city, we do the, we basically I just decide I'm going to take everything that we do out there and just bring it out here, really, just so everything that we're doing is just focus on, like, Start with fitness, right? It starts with fitness, and then obviously, like that's that's not like the end of it. We want we want to build a, more of a like a family environment. So we want to see. I'm I talk to pretty much reason a lot out out of school. He's coming down to our uh, our gym in the city. We're talking just building that like that bond, and we're working out. But uh, we we start with that. So now we're talking about how you how you doing in school, how you doing like anything that anything that you need outside of just like the gym stuff. So we, like I said, we just bring all of that, and then just took it to. Like took it to CV and just brought it to like a family environment. You want to bring everybody together, and we started one, and I think it's doing pretty good. We started with one kid, and now we got up to what fourteen uh, la uh, last week or two weeks ago. So it's it's slowly growing, but I think we're we're catching on a lot. But so I think all, like all the things that we've been doing is just trying to bring everybody together and focus more on like like we're trying to. I was talking to some people at uh, Carla, I believe, uh, at the school. We wanted to bring like more incentive programs, so how kids are doing in school also. So, like, how's your grades doing? Um, if you're getting in trouble in school still, like we talked about, we want to focus on, like I said, this is, this isn't, this is like, we want to kind of, not like a privilege, but we want to make sure, like, this is something that you guys want to come to, like, come to the school program. So we want to make sure that we're doing things for you guys that you guys are, I want to come back. Like, I like these guys. These ain't just people that we're working out with. These are guys that are helping me with, like, everyday life stuff. And like you said, this is Reese and Lexi. These are like students that we've seen like showing well, me and Thomas will also we've seen as just own leadership qualities at the at, at the school. Reese steps up a lot. He tries to be a leader every day. He tries to <laughs> he tries to he tries to take charge and show everybody what to do. But he's been he, him and Lexi have been a big help out there. But if they wanna like talk a little bit about what how they got from like what they get from us and what we do for them, guys. Um so I really didn't even really know how I got into benchmark. <laughs> Dr. Smith called me down and told me to go down there, so I did. Uh, and then I just met Tavon. He was he's pretty cool. I'm, and then uh, I started working out over there, and uh, I came down to the benchmark gym in the city, and I started working out down there too now. Uh, yeah, that's really all I got. Oh. Um. Um. I like Benchmark because, like, usually after school, I really have nothing to do. And, like, I like that how on Tuesdays and Thursdays I can look forward to, you know, coming down to Benchmark. And, you know, since we're getting more and more people, I like how, like, we're, like, building a community, basically. And, like, we work together every day. Or Tuesdays and Thursdays. <laughs> to, um, we're working on every day. We're trying yeah. to get to it. <laughs> oh, Soon. Tuesdays and Thursdays to, like, we end up talking after. You know, we usually have, like, a topic that we talk about, and we get everyone's, like, perspective or intake, and I like that. Uh, yeah. The discussions at the end, I forgot to touch on that a little bit, but we just, we, at first we decided, like, we'll pick, like, different, like, leadership topics and stuff at the end of the day. So, like, 15 minutes at the end of the day, like, pick a little topic and talk about it. And uh, it, it can definitely be a little challenging when all the kids are coming out <coughs> and they're just, they're, they're tired, so it's, like, a little bit to talk about, but... So we just, uh, we started, me and Thomas decided we'll do like 
uh, like monthly themes. So this month was actually our leadership month. So we'll pick like the leader of the day, like after like the, the thing, get everybody's perspective on who they think was a leader. Uh, why why do you think that? What what causes they show today and stuff like that, just so the kids can like get a little bit of that feeling. Like I did, a, I had a good job today, and my peers recognize that. Not just people that's running the program, but all of my peers, and that we're just going to keep building on those things. Like just touching on little topics throughout, like to the end of the year. <coughs> Our, our invitation is for anyone who wants to come to see it to stop in on a Tuesday or Thursday, meet with Tavon and the students, and just witness what we're up to. Thanks for allowing us to be a part of what you're doing. Thank you for what you're doing. Yeah. That's That's awesome. Awesome. And I think a great part is, too, is, you know, there's a lot of people behind the scenes that, that aren't here that have been helping out, too, is, is people need to realize that it's not just Tavon and, and Will and the others coming on Tuesdays and Thursdays. There's, you know, Will is always willing, you know, we're talking on a, on a weekly basis or texting back and forth and, you know, Tavon is texting back and forth with Mr. Dunsavage, who has gone down and worked out with the students. Um, Mrs. DiClemente, our homeschool visitor, um, who, who knew about the program for many years, goes down and has been working out and so forth. So there's a lot of, you know, staff that has bought in and, and these guys, again, are not just coming Tuesdays and Thursdays and that's it, they're done. You know, you heard that Reese is going down to the gym in the evening. Um, that these guys are accessible to us, that if we're having concerns, it's constant share of information, you know, back and forth, which I truly appreciate. And, you know, it's just a great partnership. So I truly appreciate everything that they're doing for our kids. Yeah, I think everybody been at the school been a, a huge help for us, especially like bringing the kids down, just giving them, like giving us a chance to even connect with the kids. Dr. Smith been huge, just always referring different kids come down. So, and then Mr. Dunstad, we've definitely been talking a lot. And also Carla, we've been talking about, the, like I said, the school stuff. So making sure kids are doing good in school. So we've been trying to figure out ways to do that. Like, so like, just so that we could incentivize stuff. So like, maybe take them out to eat or stuff like that. Just like, again, going back to that family environment. I just w wish it was easy with Reese if I just say, hey, go there, and they would all go. And then they would never, no. no, thanks, guys. May, Thank you. May I ask, what time do you meet? Uh, right after school. So, yeah. like, after dismissal, we'll go down in the weight room. 2.40 so, before on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Yeah, so we timed it the same days that we have the learning lab mm -hmm. so that we can also um, provide transportation home if we need to. Um, so it works out there. Not everybody um, takes the transportation, you know, probably half of them. Um, but it works out really nice that we already had the transportation set. It already worked out that we had the weight room that's open Monday, Wednesday, Friday for our athletes. So we could pair them Tuesdays and Thursdays. Nobody was really using it. So it was kind of a win-win all the way around. That we're, you know, the weight room was open. We already had transportation. Now they have access to be able to go and grab a snack before they go to a workout as well. So it's kind of all, you know, just worked out that it's all tied together. Excellent. Any questions that you guys have for any of the, the students that were here tonight? Nothing but students, but off, off subject. So two things. Um, we haven't had the crash simulation and rescue in a couple of years. Is that scheduled for? We we are still trying to work out with community. Okay. Um, Next year? Service groups, correct. Okay. It, we had limitations because of COVID yeah. um, and different protocols that they the emergency service providers had. Um, but we are definitely hoping for next year. Okay. And when you're back next time, I would love to get uh, an overview of eSports. Especially with uh, now we're offering scholarships, or now schools are offering scholarships for esports, and the sponsorships are started starting to get interesting. Yep. So we, we actually have at least one student, maybe more, that will do um, when we have our um, signing day mm -hmm. coming up here in the spring. Uh, that will be signing on that day mm -hmm. from for esports. So. Any other questions? Um, just one in regards to um, particularly the benchmark. So. Are all the connections in place? Because I know um, I have some experience with some of those types of things where you have a, a different environment for kids that can come and they start to make connections and then they start to open up a little about what they're dealing with at home and all these different areas. So are all the connections from benchmark back to CV, are those all already in place? That way if, you know, like Tavon's talking to a guy and realize, hey, we, we actually have kind of a, a crisis level thing that they can direct it where it needs to go? Yeah, absolutely. And again, I mean, we communicate sometimes on a daily basis, sometimes a couple times a week, whatever, and just checking in with one another and so forth. But absolutely. I mean, they have all of the administrators phone numbers. And like I said, half the time, you know, uh, we're down there checking in and so forth that, you know, on, on, um, when Tavon was in on um, Tuesday or uh, Thursday last, um, I'll stop down the last 10 minutes, just check in and say hi, you know, and so forth. So absolutely. They have access to all of us to know, you know, and then we would help manage that from, 
Um, a lot of times, by the time they're um, done, our counselors have left and so forth. But we would we would help manage that if if something happened. Very cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks, guys. All right. all right, thank you. Thank you so much. <clears throat> you okay if we allow these guys to yep. sneak out? Yeah, they can all, all right. take off if they like. Now's the time to sneak out. <laughs> <laughs> That's boring for you. <laughs> <laughs> you guys start locking the doors. Yeah. All right, keep them in. Keep them in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mr. Kramer. Pretty sure I've never seen anybody stick around when asked that question. Right. <laughs> We're out. Um, before Scott gets into his presentation, just so you kind of know what we're going to plan the next couple of meetings, um, we've tried to organize this so that and several of you um, were here in November when Scott, actually December, it's usually November, we did it December this year, um, when Scott did the last update, um, obviously some things have transpired since then, um, both on the interest rate side and then on our project side. Uh, so what we're trying to set up is that um, Scott would give you an overview tonight of where we are um, from an interest rate and um, borrowing standpoint. We went out to bid on the Leola and the uh, new Smoketown existing middle school project on Friday. Uh, we just had the pre-bid meeting for both of those projects this afternoon uh, in anticipation that we will be able to bring you bid results back in April and then also follow that up with Scott coming back in April and, and kind of nailing down once we know how much money we need to borrow to finish the next group of projects, then we can update this and really show you what it looks like and then start the process forward to actually doing the borrowing to get those funds in place. So with that caveat... I'll let you take Great. the rest of it. So it's nice to see everybody again. Some new faces. Mr. Dillman not here. Um, <laughs> but as Phyllis mentioned, the last 90 days uh, have been a little bit of a crazy um, period of time with respect to the financial markets leading up to um, what's happening in, in Eastern Europe in the last two weeks. The time we met in December... Yet the expectation was the Federal Reserve was sending signals that you know they were needed needing to fend off inflation with a series of interest rate hikes over the course of 2022 and 2023. Um, you know, depending on who you talk to, that's you know four or five, six rate increases over the next uh, several months. The first is you know the meeting starts tomorrow and the announcement will be Wednesday. Uh, the expectation now is for a quarter point hike at the at the meeting on Wednesday. Um, two weeks ago, before the crisis broke out in the Ukraine, that was likely going to be a 50 basis point rate hike. Um, again, people are now, there's a lot of uncertainty. Oil's at, well, back down to 100 today, but hitting 125, 130. Inflation that we haven't seen um, in 40 years. So all those things ultimately are leading to higher interest rates. Um, real quick before I speak to the chart, uh, the 10-year Treasury is kind of the benchmark in our world for the general trend of interest rates. Um, Prior to two weeks ago, the 10-year Treasury got to 2.1%. The Russians moved into Ukraine. There was a flight to quality, and that rate moved lower to 1.68 almost overnight. That's a flight to quality, the, the security of the U.S. Treasury, uh, government securities. Now that we're starting to see the effects of what's happening in, in Ukraine, um, the word today was that the talks um, are taking on a more positive tone between uh, the Russians and the Ukrainians. Uh, the 10-year Treasury today was up 15 basis points to 2.15%. is the highest it's been since 2019. So that message is what we're trying to get ahead of. Um, understanding your timing um, isn't always in line with what's happening with respect to rates. Largely what we tried to do up until this point was get as much of the project financed at those great rates we saw in 2020 and 2021. Mm -hmm. The last piece here, we're still, you're going to see here in a second, still at or near the bottom with respect to rates. But it's going to, over time here, going to get away from us if we don't uh, keep it moving. So that's the message, um, you know, as we lay out the next 45 to 60 days. So slide two, you can see the trend has been uh, lower uh, since 1990. Look at the, the lower right-hand quadrant of the, of the interest rate chart. It's been kind of bouncing around since COVID. Um, but you can see that the, the move recently has been 
been up. We're about 100 basis points or 1% off of the lows. The box in the middle of the page still speaks to um, a very important thing that we're telling our clients. Rates are higher than what they are now 95% of the time. So still a very, very good time to be borrowing. We've not gotten the Sorry. absolute bottom, but the prior financings that we've done, that we've done over the last two years um, are at or near the bottom. Pages three and four really in here again, refresher for those who were here in December for the new faces. Um, this is the, the district's existing debt profile on a gross basis. And when we say gross, before you factor in any reimbursement uh, that you receive, you receive very little reimbursement from the Department of Education. But this is um, all the various component parts of your, uh, your total debt. Column nine being uh, the total. Uh, you can see your run rate in 2023 is 6.15 million, and then it drops down uh, to 5.8. We're going to fill that in uh, with the next financing. Your debt goes out to 2044. Uh, page four, real quick. This is the net debt service. You can see at the bottom of the page, we outline for you the reimbursement that you receive on some of those issues. Uh, so you can see the run rate really doesn't change a whole lot because, again, you're getting uh, little or almost zero reimbursement from the Department of Education. One thing I would, I would note before we move on to the next slide uh, for the new board members, um, you know, prior to going through, you know, starting this plan of finance several years ago, the district had really set itself up in a place to borrow the $100, $120 million uh, for these projects, having waited until all of its old debt had kind of gone away. And so very unusual situation relative to your peers. Uh, we're now finding ourselves kind of at the end of this project. Um, with a lot of flexibility to, to finish this one up, but also not put yourself in a position that you can't do the things down the road that you may need to do uh, in the next 10 to 15 years. So one of the goals uh, in our plan of finance was, hey guys, you know, this is a big project for CV. You've prepared for it, you've prepared for it, for it you've planned for it, um, but we want to not back you into a corner so that you can't do the things on the other side of this project that you want to do around curriculum, and around the campus in particular, um, and, and make sure you're succeeding in the next 25, 30 years. So Miller's study you see on page five, again, something you've seen from us um, over the last four or five years. Column two um, is the debt service that flips uh, to the prior page, the net debt service column. The blue shaded um, column three is the proposed debt service for the next $24 million. So to Phyllis's point, you know, the unknown at the moment is there's about $30 million of remaining projects on the list. Uh, you have six or $7 million of other funds, ESSER funds that uh, we may use for the project. Um, and so at the moment, it's roughly 24 million that needs to be financed on a long-term basis. Once we have bids in hand, we'll come back to that April meeting and finalize, you know, if bids come in a little higher, a little lower, we can fine tune these numbers um, and roll with whatever comes um, through the bid process. The other thing I would note is that was by design uh, that we, when we started this project that we would keep your cash. The district has a really good rating largely because it has really good reserves, capital project reserves, general fund reserves. Um, that's a very important key in the rating presentation that we're going to embark on in the next 30 days. But that also gave you the flexibility at the end of the project, if you wanted to apply monies to the project, uh, either ESSER monies or general fund monies, you were going to be able to do that, either to phase in millage that you'll see here, um, or maybe to finance other projects you know, after we do this financing. So a couple of the key components here, column seven is the actual amounts that you're going to need to go up in the budgets. This is not very uh, different from what you saw from us in December. I think the millage impact that we shared with you in December was 0.448 mills. It's 0.5 mills now, but there's a little extra um, project dollars in, in this summary. We've spread it out in column nine in the blue shaded box over in the upper right-hand corner, spread out over the next four or five budgets. Um, and again, none of this is written in stone. Again, part of the flexibility that Phyllis and her team has is um, because you have those cash balances, because we've kind of dovetailed all of the debt service together, uh, if there's a budget year that's particularly tough for some other area of your budget, I'm not saying you should get in the habit of punting the debt service down the road, but you can, in a, in a tough budget year, make up for it the following year by using your cash 
prudently um, over those couple of years. So what you see in column nine is kind of a level 0.07 mils, 0.12 mils, 0.11 mils, 0.11 mils. That may or may not be exactly how it lays out, but the key is it's 0.5 mils um, at the end of the day to get the full 120-ish million, million in place. So as Phyllis mentioned, real quick, page six um, is the timetable for moving things forward in the next 60 days. Obviously, March 14th, we're here this evening just giving you a real brief update. Um, what's next, uh, Phyllis and her team have um, begun to work on the information that we'll send um, to the rating agency. Um, we'll set a time probably in early April for that call to review the rating. Um, at the same time, you're going to be getting those bids in uh, late March, early April as well, so we'll have a final number. So the plan is um, we'll be back to the April 11th meeting with real numbers to plug in here um, and help you make a decision on what's the right permanent financing number with all the other things that are in play. It's we got a bid now that we know, we have cash over here, we have extra monies over here, what's, what's the exact number that we're going to borrow? And then we'll come back the following week uh, with your bond council to the actual resolution night uh, where uh, we'll adopt the parameters resolution. Probably a day or two after that um, in April, we'll lock in interest rates and you'll be at the closing table in May with, with cash in the bank. Um, again, we're wanting to keep up with what we think are some pretty significant rises in interest rate rates over the next six months. So this is the last piece, but it's an important piece that we get done at these really uh, still attractive rates. So with that, I know I threw a lot out there. I'm at um, you just, question. Scott had mentioned um, the ESSER funds um, being part of, of the project as well. So th that also coalesces with all of this timing. Um, PDE is due to let us know by March 24th um, an approval on our application um, to use that. It's about $8 million um, between the two projects on HVAC renovations out of the ESSER funds that we received. Uh, so we did get notification recently um, where they posted an e-grants recently that you know that's moving through the process and it's actually in the final stage. We can see that now. It was not moving for a while and I was sort of getting nervous, like, come on, let's go. Um, but they did tell us last week that it will be by March 24th. We'll know that. So we'll sort of know that piece, whether we can use those funds or not. Um, as Scott said, you know, we'll have the bids, we'll have everything in place. We'll still have our, our reserves that we're sitting on. And then, of course, you know, depending on what, what we decide to do with Smoketown, we would have proceeds of a, of a real estate sale as well um, because we will still need to look at then Fritz and, and the high school. Those will be the last two, two pieces. So, Any questions for Scott? So Mike's thoughts. Mike's thoughts. Oh, Mike's thoughts on this. All right, so the key to this whole thing is to get the lowest interest rate possible. Okay. All right. So we have a pretty good idea about how much we're going to need. And I think when you have all your documentation, you're probably going to be plus or minus 10%, maybe-ish, in total dollars. So what I don't want to do is I don't want to wait for that to come in if you're going to have to pay an extra percentage point or yeah, an extra We, we really need the bids to come in because the bids have sort of been all over the place with some of the other yeah. projects that we're seeing. So, and, and it's 30 days, I'm out. Yeah, so the timing is, the rating agency we'll never get, We're not gonna get it same. done by April at this point anyway. Yeah. We haven't even done right. the rating right. call yet, right. so. All right. Or pass well, the parameters resolution. Sooner than later. Yes. yes. Yeah. Which is why we have it set up for yeah. May, certainly. ASAP, yeah. yeah. And this is not gonna be a hedging thing where we lock it in at a certain rate? No. No, this, this is no, straight away. This is gonna be, as soon as you go to market, that's your rate you're locked yep. in? It's not, exactly. Okay. And I would, I would say that Again, if we get some resolution in the Ukraine crisis, I feel mm -hmm. the, the trend is certainly for higher interest rates. And I don't know we're going to see that resolution in the next 30 days. A lot of the move, quite frankly, um, in the overall yield curve where you are most concerned, the 10 to 30 year spot of the yield curve has, we've already seen that move. Mm -hmm. What we're going to see from the Fed is short term rates. That's the overnight lending rate. Um, we're going to get a quarter that's already baked in, quite frankly, into the short term market as well. So. No, I don't have that crystal ball. If I, I well, no, no one does. right, yeah. but so we're I think we're moving as quickly as we can, okay. um, and as soon as we have that resolution in place, we have a firm number from a bid, and we're going to clean it up right. and be done. Yeah, let's just not wait. Someone's not bidding, and they're yep. not. Yep. 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 just got it. Okay, is there a deadline for the bids to be in? Yes, it is. Thank you. <laughs> of course, we've already asked for a. An extension on that, but <laughs> you can say no. 
We can. You can. But we can't get it to you any faster than the April board meeting yeah. anyway. Yeah. So if we need to give them a couple extra days, as but long if, as we can still get it to you here in April. Yeah. 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 If you think that between the time you're ready and the time that the board meeting is, you think there's going to be half a point or point delta, we could probably come together for an emergency board meeting or a irregular board meeting to just get it approved to lock in the lower rate. If we would see something dramatic like that, yeah. we would certainly tell you. Again, the, the moves by the Fed, the quarter or the half, like that's on the short-term part of the curve. Moves that we see on a consistent basis are moves like we saw today where the 10 – most important spot of the yield curve for you is the 10 to 30 year long term borrowing rates, not what the Fed's doing in the short term. on the short term. So the move that we saw saw from 195 to 250 today, <coughs> that's a big move uh, on any given day in, in our world with respect to long term interest rates. Municipal rates will then follow that at some point. Just because the Treasury market's moving and the, and the Fed is moving doesn't necessarily mean sure. that municipals are moving with it. And every percentage point means we can do something else with that money mm -hmm. over the long term, right. et cetera. Exactly. Um, okay, I'm done. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Thank no. you for that <laughs> CNBC ish words of wisdom. Yep. You're good. <laughs> Try. Yeah, no, it's all good. So, yeah. And what did we lock in last time? We locked in at four. We've been an average rate of low twos on everything so far, yeah. So you. you You've cheap, been at or near cheap, the bottom on everything yeah. for you know ninety percent of this project. This right. is the last piece, and it's still going to be low at attractive right. rates. Yeah. And you said we're still looked on favorably, just the CV in general. Yeah, double A rated, um, which is really good. When we actually have two ratings because we did the S and P and then we did the Moody's rating, or vice versa. I don't remember Correct. now. So. And one thing too is that we had a lot of debt coming off, and so now it, it was time to do it now rather than, than later. Yeah, one of the things we'll share with you, hopefully at the April meeting, is the rating report. If we don't have the rating in hand by the by the 11th, we'll, we will certainly by the second meeting, but we'll bring the old rating report for you. It's, it's good bedtime reading, but it's also, um, it is a really good two-page read on all the things that you have done well here at CV financially. It, 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 it really speaks volumes, because there's not a whole lot of AA rated schools around and, and you're in kind of rarefied air with a really good rating. The financial house has been in order here for a very long period of time. So um, that's a, a, you know, the golden goose, you know, that the, every board has protected, every administration has protected over the years since we've been here. Um, and so that ultimately leads to lower borrowing costs because of that great rating. It's just like your credit rating at home, the better credit rating you have, you can go to the bank and get a better rate. Same thing applies here. For sure. So a couple things to think about, not taking the band-aid off the wound, et cetera, but with rates so low, we've talked about the Performing Arts Center. We've talked about other things, too, that if we are interested in doing some additional capital projects, interest rates will never be this low again in our lifetime, that it should be just something to think about. Yeah, and our intent would be once we get the bids in on these two projects, then we'll look at what's left, what? which would be Fritz and whatever we decide to do sure. at the high school. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. We'll see you in a couple weeks. Thank you. Actually, thank you. Can't wait. <laughs> What's that? I can't wait. Everyone <laughs> says that too. Yeah. Just turn on. Have a good night. Thank good you night. too. She doesn't want to stay either. <laughs> good evening, board. Good evening, Wes. <sighs> You want me to start, Don? Or how do you want to start, Don? So, you, you tell me middle school's on top. So. Yep, I'll knock out the middle school then. I have three change orders this evening um, under both the general construction contract and the plumbing uh, contract. We have uh, I got the general. general construction. Okay, the first one is a cost that represents changing out the flooring for one of the stair towers. Um, this one is a touch convoluted, but generally... What we've discovered via another project is the manufacturer no longer supports this flooring from a warranty standpoint, and specifically, they no longer support it when it is exposed to sunlight, which is not a very tenable condition, to say the least. We are having this argument with another project. That is not of your concern, but what we wanted to do was get this flooring out of, the, uh, out of this project. Obviously, this was discovered post-bid on this job. Um, Soften the blow a little bit. I know this is a hard pill to swallow. We are going to attempt to reuse this floor on one of the upcoming projects. 
that floor is ours. Both the, uh, I think Leola is the prime target. It has some interior stairs that would not be exposed to sunlight. So it would be, we could reuse it there. Um, so that is the cost for that. There is a credit. Uh, I think most of you have heard me present uh, the new principal. Principal Quirk has gone through the documents. This is one of those uh, changes he wanted to make. He has some furniture in mind that I think they have on hand or you have on hand, and that would replace some built-in casework. So there's a credit for that. Can I go back to the other one? Yes. Um, that says it shows Jane changing the color. Yeah, it's actually a different product. We're going completely away from that manufacturer. Obviously, we don't want anything more than we have to do with okay, them. This is not what it says here. It's not just a matter of changing color. It's product. Yeah, it's product. Yeah, yes. It's changing product, product and color. And color, yes. yes. And it's not returnable. No. It's already been purchased. So what are but are you going to be able to apply it to Leola, though? Exactly. So That's the point. Yeah. Use, use, use the product where we don't have exposure to sunlight. Okay. It makes sense. So you were gonna. It was gonna be in one of the stair towers. That's class. Yeah, one stair stair the middle school stair, stair towers glass. are right. Class. Where sunlight is right. guaranteed. Okay. Yeah. All right. Other one. Um, and then under the plumbing contract, again, uh, as I just said, this is part of the couple of changes that the uh, district and principal wanted to make. Um, this is the plumbing changes uh, resulting from the request. Um, is this in the office area? No, this is actually in the special education, the life yeah, skills okay. classroom, yeah. switching out some of those, what I would call kitchen pods, Dr. Z, for lack of a better term, and converting them into, uh, I think, more just general life skills. So mm -hmm. um, there wasn't water running to some of these areas, and they, they wanted a uh, washer and dryer installed there. Yep. Um, with the change orders presented this evening, we are still operating at a, a positive rate of negative, well, a negative rate of 0.04%, so in the black, so to speak. Okay. Overall. So change orders are, we're saving money right now on change orders. We are, exactly right. Happy to answer any questions, or I think Don has Brownstown to present. Yeah, for Brownstown this evening, we have two mechanical, well, yeah, you're cooking the GC, the, a general contracting change order um, that uh, includes uh, some existing tanks that were found um, during construction. They were unforeseen and not documented. Um, so $9,000, $9,999 for the removal of those tanks and also a credit of $27,124 for exterior masonry work that was not, was, there were allowances on the drawings that as we got into construction and we were going around and, and looking at each side of the building with the contractors, these were, um, these, this was scope that wasn't required and so we've taken the credit on that. This is separate from the unit cost allowances, so this doesn't take away from the unit cost allowances that you'll see on the financial reports, so those uh, that $150,000 is still there, and we'll be processing a credit for that for the general contractor. Were these tanks buried? Were we? They were buried tanks, yes. And nobody knew they were there? No one, no. we didn't know they were there. Not until we had them. Not until we had them, yes. <laughs> <laughs> not until you, you hit them? Digging? Not until we found them. They, were they, they were full of from, stuff or were they empty? They were from back in the day when there was a, a sewer plant on site. Okay. okay. Yeah, so there was no documentation that they were there. They were. Just there. Just there. Within the back in the field were the uh, sinkhole? Uh, Happen, or was it? They these were, were there. They, they were, were on the north side of like the. Like where the parking is now. Ah, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So they were the sewer tanks. From the wastewater treatment plant? They were holding tanks for. Septic. Yeah. That stinks. <laughs> 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 Sorry, you, you helped set me up for that. You hit it all. Yeah. Then there are two mechanical change orders. Both of them are credits. Uh, change order MCO4 is um, the credit change order to um, re uh, reconcile the allowances that were not used on the project. So this is a credit of $34,000 uh, for allowances that were not needed um, during construction. And change order number five, uh, which is another credit change order, 
Um, there's nine items listed here, and um, it totals 34000 in credit. And basically, this goes through and reconciles some issues we had with the mechanical contractor where, you know, we had, the, because of the schedule, we had to have the balancing contractor out more times than was originally anticipated. Mm -hmm. Costs like that that the district shouldn't bear. So that's what this is. this change order is reflecting, is us reconciling those issues just to make sure that uh, the district wasn't, you know, expending monies that they shouldn't have. So with these two change orders, the mechanical contract is is res resolved and closed. Okay. okay. Everything's dialed in, working properly from the HVAC perspective. Winter and summer? Winter and spring? So we will be working over the next uh, month, two months, to close out the general contractor who's the only contractor that's left and some of their work sure. was weather pending. Sure. So. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Our next item is the superintendent's report and although this is a, uh, a work session, it's usually a discussion, deliberation, occasionally items need to be uh, addressed more timely. Correct. Thank you, Madam President. Um, most importantly, uh, you already met two of the teachers uh, if we can get one started sooner than later, it would be appreciated. Um, also, we have two coaches for the spring. Uh, I sent out an email uh -huh. yep. earlier in the week. They are on for action. Um, plus, we had um, normal personnel items there. Do you need a motion for the speaker? Any questions? I need a motion to approve the superintendent's report. I move we approve the superintendent's report. Second. I have a motion and a second. Can we have a roll call, please? Denise? Uh, yes, Mr. Benigno. Aye. Mr. Talley? Aye. Mrs. Kapka? Aye. Mr. Gensel? Aye. Dr. Martin? Aye. Mrs. Trowbridge? Aye. And Mrs. Groff? Aye. Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay. Uh, IU 13 budget. Oops, I missed one. Policy. Yes. Uh, we do policy. We do policy. Oh, we're not right there. Oh, oh I didn't really want to get into that tonight. Well, we can skip it. Policy <laughs> review. <laughs> All right, we're going to start with uh, 820, and, and Teresa Drager is our Director of Food Services, for those of you that haven't met her yet. She's wanting to make sure all of our kids are fed every day, rain, <laughs> snow, sleet, or hail, it doesn't yes. matter. Okay, thank you so much. I'm having a problem getting them to come up here. Ah, oh, there we go. You got it. Yeah, got it. I think it's way down there. It is way down there. Okay, the reason that I'm here tonight is because I'm, I'm requesting for a... Um, Hopefully a board approval for a policy change, and it's on the 820 food service policy. <clears throat> and um, the food service is overseen by the Pennsylvania Department of Food uh, and Nutrition Division. And like everyone else, we also have audits and have reviews. And uh, CV actually this year had two. We had an administrative review, which is conducted every five years, and mainly there's 10 categories out of there. And the main thing is there's a lot of off-site information different information requests. Once you do that, then you look things over. And then there's also a on-site visit, which really has cut down and nearly come maybe a few hours. <clears throat> and because of this, um, they select two buildings, and it was Spoke Town of Fritz. And the second review is a procurement review. This is my first time for a procurement review. This is done every six years, and this is more kind of like the financial side of it. But because the um, administrative review, the one category was called resource management, and they look at your policies and procedures. So unfortunately, there was a section in here stating um, we would serve an alternative meal. Unfortunately, Act 55 came out, and we can no longer serve an alternative meal. So we need to take everything out of five and put in exactly the paragraph that they said needs to put in, uh, regardless of whether a student has money to pay for a meal or, or any money in their funds, they automatically receive a meal. <clears throat> now, I know there's some new board members, and I'm not sure if everyone knows what an alternative meal is. Um, <clears throat> at the very beginning of the school year, every parent or guardian is, is encouraged to fill out what's called a meal benefit application. And with that, it goes on uh, household size and household income. Then a certain poverty level to say, you know, if they're approved, could they either be a reduced student a free student, and unfortunately, if they don't meet those qualifications, and naturally, they're a paid student. Mm -hmm. So, and I know some of you realize from way back when, pre-COVID and pandemic, um, <clears throat> we had a lot of problem with lunch charging. So, whether they were reduced or paid, they come through, and unfortunately, just don't have the funds to pay. When they come through, we would simply have them do a, a lunch charge slip, and then hopefully, 
we would send out, we would do everything and anything we can to get that money back at the end of the year, but unfortunately, some parents just couldn't afford it. So with that, <clears throat> we would send it off. Let's be honest. Okay? Yes, we, correct. This is a heated discussion. Correct. All right? About correct. 10 grand, more than that. Yes. In outstanding payments. Right. So then, then we CV decided we'd come up with a lunch charge policy. So now I think our first one was like they could charge 10 for the year. The first five, once they hit that fifth one, then we'd be given an alternative meal. Now, alternative meal means they simply cannot choose the main entree. Yeah. So we first did peanut butter and jelly, but unfortunately kids loved the peanut butter and jelly and that wasn't any deterrence <laughs> to charging. So then we used a cheese sandwich. So then they would still get their milk and they'd still get to choose a, a fruit or a vegetable, you know, what they wanted, but that's a reimbursable meal. So then we did our own and that kind of helped a little bit and went from thousands, I think, to hundreds. But then I don't know what happened, something somewhere in the nation um, when they were doing lunch charges, it ended up, I guess, that the students were getting embarrassed because when they would come through, they wouldn't catch that before they got their meal. So that poor student, their meal was taken from them. And, you know, that, that was embarrassment. And somewhere along the line, someone must have made them do something, some type of chore, maybe sweep them off the floor, or maybe even, <laughs> excuse me, wipe tables. And that, you know, that can't be. We never, ever, and will never, ever do that. But then, I'm okay with that. <laughs> Do you know? Just want you know. Well, Act 55. I understand Act 55. Yeah. I get it. And that's, that's what happened. Then we can no longer, you know, uh, take anything away. You can't make them do chores. Um, you know, you can no longer give them an alternative meal. So then when that child comes through, they get to pick and choose, you know, whatever meal is served. Mm -hmm. And because of that, um, that is why we need the policy change. I'm not all right with that. Having kids, <laughs> having kids wipe tables for what the parents want to. I, I get it. I get it. But okay. How many times do these parents find that slip that they owe money in the back of their back? That's the, the parents. Back That's not the kids. Well, I'm we were sorry. we were lucky. Oh. We have a wonderful community, and between yeah. uh, donations, we had churching donations. We had a giant yeah. food store donation, and even I know um, uh, faculty and principals and things had donated, and we were actually able to clear. All the lunch charges. So as of now, the lunch charges are clear, and we were hoping that the waivers, all the waivers that came through for the past two years, would continue. But unfortunately, the last I heard is they have not continued. I know SNA School Nutrition Association is going to fight and see what more we can do to hopefully continue at least for another year. But I don't think the money was actually in the budget. So. Are you talking about the, for the free lunch? Free lunch didn't. Yeah, the omnibus bill that they paid for the didn't next, include it. No, didn't correct. Include it. They did not include it. No. Nope. And so, unfortunately, this coming school year would be a big challenge. This coming school year? We should probably get that word out quickly. So yes. we're going to go back to registration as, again. As yeah. soon as that, right. As yeah. soon as we know for sure, yes, we'll have to get things out and robocalls and text messages and letters and websites, just like we did for lunch charges. Yeah. It'll go back to paid free and reduced. So it's, right. it's, yep. you know. I will tell you that Teresa is as hardworking as she is calm. <laughs> and going through the audit... Nope, we're good, we're good, we're good. She's all happy. And one day she called me, and I didn't know who this person was screaming at me. I knew who was. <laughs> she wasn't really screaming, but she's like, I can't believe we got written up for one paragraph. That was her only write-up. Uh -huh. So kudos to you and your staff for going through three audits, mm -hmm. and all, you, all they found was a paragraph. Well, I actually called Vonda, the head of the food nutrition, and said, hey, does this have to be a, <laughs> a corrective action? Well... Then they said, well, out of, I think they might have said 20 or 25 corrective actions they did for just for the districts that they covered this year, and over half had the same policy. Problem. And this fixes that deviation? It does. This, yes. fit, this fixes the right of Correct. Uh, I've already put it through, and they've already accepted the corrective action. I, I so. have one, one concern. Uh, yes. The heading here uh, finishes with the district shall. But number four isn't what the district shall. Number four is just a quote from the law that says what all districts have to do. I think that wording needs to be okay. spe specific. We can take the number out and slide the paragraph over. Right. And it doesn't, yeah. and it doesn't fall under the district shall. It's just each, well. It's also a paragraph. Yes, but even so, aren't our policies supposed to reflect what we have to do, not what all schools everywhere have to do? I mean, all we have to do is, is change that uh, the school district will provide a food product. You know, just get rid of that every school must. I don't know why it's in our, our policy what every school must do. Could it, instead of... This is more... Go ahead. 
it said the cards coming home with the little kids because my daughter in kindergarten did this. We put money in her account. We counted it out. We didn't know she was getting ice cream every day on top of the line. <laughs> so she was getting all these cards sticking in her book bag. We didn't know. So I didn't know maybe the first step would be email the parents. So, because I had no idea. Well, we were, we, the way we were doing it is we were doing like cafeteria managers every week would send a, a lunch charge letter out. Then we also, at the end of the month, from my office, we would send it out. And I know Dr. Z, we also thought, okay, well, let's do one from... <laughs> Dr. Z. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, that really... A hard number. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It'd be we nice if that started, but... payment center would say, hey, you have 10 bucks left. Hey, you have 5 bucks left. I think you can. You can go you can in there. Yep, you can okay. go in there and put, like, a low balance. Okay. So if you don't want it to get any lower than $5, you can put that right in there. Then you should get a notification. I mean, they're told no there. ice cream, but... And there's an itemized list. It tells you that they had two oh, ice creams that day. Yeah, she can go in and check. <laughs> Does mm -hmm. our about But for the friends... for lunch today? Yeah. 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 ice cream sandwiches, the whole kitchen yeah, exactly. table. Yeah. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. Um, Six sausage, bacon, cheese. Yeah. Yeah. Got it for you, our friends. Do we want to reword that? Yeah. Have Dr. Z reword it? Sure. Yeah. Get back to us? Or just reword it and then so stick a look at it next week. Throw yeah, it on there and close out her yeah. corrective action. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks, Teresa. But I am interested in some creative ways of getting, as, as we stop the free lunch programs, right. we're going to repeat that cycle of people not paying just their, have to their get, debt. Just make sure we get things so, out early enough and reiterate and reiterate and reiterate. Yeah, I know. So, All right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. There's going to be more of a first group Next one is uh, Board Policy 902. And um, for those of you who haven't met Katie Meyer, Katie is our, our PR director. So she took that first crack at these because a lot of these are public relations policies. Ah, there it is. Mm. It's a small I know, but I couldn't it's, get it to yeah. go and his finger could. Yeah. So, uh, when you get to 902, um, and Katie, you want to, I don't know if you want to jump in or just... No, I think 20 again. You just push the button again. No, just, just it won't bring up the middle 902. Try to make it one I hit. Use your finger. No, sorry, that's okay, watch. Are you going to just use... I'll just, just go down here. Uh, what are we at? 902, right? Yeah. yeah. Just... Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Okay, she's got it. Go ahead, Katie. Uh, so a lot of these are simply renaming the sections to match what other districts have done more recently than we have. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the way we've organized things, um, it fell in a category that we've now named guidelines. So a lot of the information just shifted to a different section um, to match what other districts mm -hmm. are doing. Um, there weren't a lot of other massive changes. The one in 902 that I kept that a lot of districts didn't have was um, 902.4, which is the building program, and that gives the principals the authority to send out routine announcements, which we do anyway, because we apparently like, and all of our principals have access to that. Right. So I'm just not sure if other districts don't give their principals access. I don't know. But we do, and it was very relevant, so I kept that one in as its own section. Well, what caught my eye was uh, under authority. The board shall determine which of its official actions has such community impact and interest. We don't do that. Have we ever done that? Have we ever decided this had to be set out? I, the superintendent shall my, determine. My point precisely. It's not, the board doesn't do that. A lot of districts kept it as board, I'm assuming, because the board and the superintendent work so closely, but we can well, shift that no, to... Not, not on small detail like that. Okay, we will take care of that. Yep. Any other questions on 902? Yes, sir. Okay. By the way, just overall good communication, by the way, from Thank websites. You. Thank you. Keeping that stuff updated, Thank keeping you. that stuff out there. Thank it's you. nice. Before we get into 903, which is for public participation at board meetings, mm -hmm. uh, I sent out an email to the board members. I don't know if any of you read the article in the PSBA board. Working through it. Yeah. There's a lot if of you, info If there. you read that, and if you read the way this policy reads compared to what how we function, they don't match. So I'm going to suggest we pull this policy for a full review. Yes, ma'am. Is that okay? Yes. Does anyone object to that? No. Then no. we'll Good. skip. We're going to skip this one. There's a lot, a lot of yeah. work to be done. Yeah. And my my only question was, did you have the new PSBA policy when you did this? 
No, I went out. No, it's coming out. Yeah, soon. the so most recent ones I was no looked at for other districts is still twenty twenty one at that yeah. point. So it makes no sense to do it twice. Okay, so we'll go on to nine oh four. Yep. Dr. Z, you did a lot of sort of the green is a lot of your updates. Um, we just really added different language that matched what other um, what other districts are doing. The definition was common, and we didn't have a definition in our previous policy, so I felt like that one was important to add. And then again, guidelines, and that's where we ended up shifting. So we used to have service animals, for example, as its own section. That's a guideline. So we kind of did away with a lot of those separate subsections and combined them all into the guidelines. There's a line in here, I'm sorry, I can't find it right now, where it says something about state uh, or federal law, and it's a typo because it says state of federal law. And I've lost it, I'm sorry. We'll look for that. Yep, got it. On authorities, by yeah. state of federal law. Yeah, that, that typo has probably been so there for years. <laughs> And then there was a, the addition of uh, the vaping products that were not in there before. Yes, that's a, uh -huh. a needed addition. All right, and then the 905 mm -hmm. is the uh, Citizen Advisory Committees. Mm -hmm. and, and the way I look at this, this is the ad hoc committees that we, uh, we create throughout the year. We bring community members in to be part of whatever that committee is. Many other districts had a lot more formal policies. You must report back. You must meet certain. We didn't have any of that, nor did I think it was applicable to add to ours. Um, is there, I understand we simplify this, but we got rid of the idea of standing committees and single issue and uh, giving a report to the board. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if I want to get rid of all of that, especially that they're obliged to give a report to the board and some of that. Uh, we're, we're, We've been talking, you know, for some months now about better communication. So it seems to me the more we explain what we're doing, the better off we are. That's just, I mean, you know me, I'm usually there for chopping everything out of policies. But mm -hmm. I just think this is really important that uh, people understand the kinds of committees we set up and the responsibilities. Right, and that communication stuff. doesn't currently exist, but if we want to keep it in the policy, that kind of holds I, I, us, holds I would, us to I it. I personally would like to. Okay. That's, just mine. I would agree. If I that says so, then yes. <laughs> it shall be done. It shall be done. Anything right. that promotes communication is a good. Is a no, good but line yeah. So we'll, yeah. all right. Um, include standing uh, committees. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And and the reporting back. Uh, I think that's that was a good important. catch. You're right. Okay. All right. So we will pull nine oh three. We'll make the changes as. Noted for 902, 904, 905, and 820. Yeah. And they will be um, reflected in next week's um, policy. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate Thank your you. work. Thanks, Katie. Thank okay, now the IU budget. Now we got the IU budget. Um, it's, a, it's a really nice handout that the IU presents. I don't know if you had a chance to take a look at it. Um, let me find it real quick. The general operating budget is actually less than 2% of their total budget. Okay. So the part that affects us, there's two parts. There's the core program of services, and there's no assessment for us. There's no membership fee. And the other one is the media services. And that's where it talks about district contributions and the district contributions haven't changed overall in the last two years. Ours have fluctuated about $500, up or down. It's, it's gone up 500 for this mm -hmm. out of um, 44,000 that we contribute. It's 500 is a delta. <coughs> so if you, if you open up the, the budget and you dig down, that's what it costs us. Everything else for the IU we pay for on an as needed basis. So if you have a classroom that you need to have some students in, you pay for that, that classroom. If you don't have students in, there's no cost. Mm -hmm. Other IU sometimes give you like a membership fee that you have to pay whether you uh, yeah. use the IU services or not. You still have IU 13 has a different business model that's been mm -hmm. very successful mm -hmm. for both the districts and the IU. <coughs> Is that a 
a good analysis? Absolutely. It is. Okay. Now, if, if you read any more deeply into that report, you would have also seen the list of all of the services and programs they have, right. which is in some ways mind-boggling that they keep track of all of those. Uh, I personally sit on the Early Childhood and Special Education Committee, where a lot of the money goes. Uh, if you think our budgeting is different than what you're used to, you're going to try the IU budgeting. They have pass-through funds and matching funds and uh, co-beneficiaries, and it's it, it just very complex. Uh, but at the end of the day, if you remember, there have been a couple of times this year when the IU stepped up and paid for programs. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. We needed COVID uh, they did. shots. They mm -hmm. paid for that. Yeah, yeah. Remember that. And I forget, there was one after that again, yeah. when they just step up and pay for these things, the services they do to their members uh, are exceptional. And every, it's, it's a shame, but every IU in the state is different. And ours, it's, if it's not the top, it's dark place to it do it. Yeah. It has a huge reputation. Uh, we sell services, we provide services, we uh, sell programs, uh, it's worth it. and we are completely business-oriented and self-sufficient. I agree with that. That's what, a pretty good deal. It is. With the new board, we should probably think about doing an IU review. I know we had one last winter, I believe. Well, we I, I, I have a, a list of uh, executive directors of related yep. uh, educational institutions that I'd like to bring to the board yep. over the course of this year to explain what they do and, and how they mesh with us. Because I didn't realize how many students we actually have going there for trainings. And you know, I used to know, I had that at one point, I yeah. don't have quite it. A, it's quite a large. Yeah, it's a few so. thousand. I think it's three or four thousand kids that get some sort of services through the IU. Oh, through all the districts. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Yep. Um, so this will be on consent next week then. Okay. Absolutely. Got it. <clears throat> Overnight trip for Cape Henlopen. Dr. Mann. This is really more for the edification of the new board members. Um, this is a recurring trip, trip, trip. but we just wanted yeah. Don to fill you in on it. Yeah, it's a good trip. Educational trip, so you get to go on it. No. Um, actually, you know, if, if you looked at this material, it began in 1965. I didn't realize it was that old, or has been around that long. But it um, began in 1965, and so it's been a standing tradition here at Conestoga Valley that we've had um, this, this trip. Now, typically, it would occur in the fall. Um, and it, the original trip went to Wallops Island, and then since then, it's been going to Cape Hanel Open ever mm -hmm. since then. Um, it originally started at the high school level and then uh, migrated, so to speak, to the eighth grade level for a couple reasons. One, primarily programming. It, it, met, it aligned better with the eighth grade standards that were uh, being taught. Um, the other big thing um, back in 2000 was that there was a growing concern about the amount of time missed because of um, block scheduling out of the classroom. Mm -hmm. So that was maybe a minor, but a, but a contributing factor nonetheless. Um, typically, we have between 30 to 40 50 students that participate in this, um, and, it, and it's based on um, somewhat of a, begins with a letter of interest, you know, so students aren't required to go, they're invited to go, um, but they have to go through a process where they submit a letter of interest mm -hmm. that's basically really rooted in career-oriented, um, and then there's other contributing factors or things that, that are considered um, through that, but a uh, nice number of students go. Um, what we're asking is to for this to be approved so we can go this spring. The current ninth grade class is the only class since 1965 that did not go um, because of COVID. Uh, mm -hmm. We didn't go. So um, um, in talking with uh, Dr. Daniker and Mr. Quirk, we feel that it would be um, a good opportunity for students, um, since things are starting to light, lighten up, to, to be able to provide this, uh, this opportunity in the spring, even though it's not when we typically would do it. Um, the, the costs are minimal, um, and there's you know, students that, that need support, you know, there's support available through the free and reduced program. So we can support students like that. Um, any questions, comments? So the, the current, you said the current ninth grade class didn't get to go. So the year before then, did they go in that fall, right before COVID yes, hit? Yes, right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. they squeaked in under the yeah. water there. Yeah, typically this is like uh, early October, mid-October. Okay. Typically, where the, the trip falls. Gotcha. What do they do on the trip? Can you give me a brief overview mm -hmm. of that? They, they at um, 
um, when they're at wallop side, um, wallop side, um, camp, camp, hand it open, they uh, st uh, studying the marsh and looking at the, the marine life that's in the marsh and the, the various uh, implications of that marine life and the impact of the environment, um, you know, the ecology goes along with that. They also um, have an opportunity, they stop and visit the, um, um, the Cape May um, White House. Yep, they, they visit that. And they also um, visit the Dover Air Force Base. And so they're looking at that area as well. Um, but So they, they do get dirty. They spend you know, some time out in the marsh. Um, the teachers that go along with them that obviously function as chaperones, but also as instructors. And so they're going out there and they're doing um, different studies and in, in, in looking at the, uh, the environment and the implications of various elements. And that marsh talk can be cold, wet, and dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Especially in October. Right? This is actually a benefit. This is probably a little <laughs> And uh, board term. members are invited mm -hmm. to get cold, wet, and dirty. And so you cold, said wet. that it's a letter of interest based on um, like a career interest mm -hmm. that they might be having. So is it mainly revolving around that idea of biology and those mm -hmm. kinds of things? Yeah. But then you also said the Air Force Base. So are there any... Guys or guys or gals that attend based on like the opportunity to see an Air Force base based on that. Not or? that I'm aware of, but I, okay. I I don't know that level of detail. I don't know if it got that very specific. But is it this is the Air Force base trip another extension of the yeah. science part? Yeah, okay. just an extension of that. Okay. Is there a way we can open this up to current ninth graders so they don't continue to miss out on little things like this, like have eighth and ninth grade go this year? Um, I'd have to check. I mean. I mean, there might be lower numbers on both because right. of parents' concerns. So maybe overall you can get enough to do the whole trip. But yeah. It's not. We can take a look at... Um, we can take a look at that. My, my, my first thought would be... I know the scheduling with their high school. So. Yeah, and the availability of whatever space they're going to. I mean, but if it stays yeah. within that number, is it possible? So um, I'll talk to Dr. Dan. Where do they right stay there. for the overnight park? <sighs> I believe there, and I, I'd have to find this for they sure. Have dorms yeah, right. Yeah, I, I, I the facility is right there. I'm explaining this to what I've already requested that the uh, administration go back to a standardized application. Uh, originally, when they wanted an overnight trip, uh, they had to tell us where they were going, when they were going, how many students, what the chaperone proportion was, what the guidelines and rules were, what it was costing, and where the money was coming from. Sometimes now we get a hand written, gee, we'd like to go to whatever, can we thank you? And I think that we have an obligation to verify that everything is being done properly. In which case, that would have been there. Okay, thank you. I don't know if anyone would deny this trip. It is exceptionally good. It's a good trip. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. Thank so you. what do we need to do to get it on the next... Cause the agenda, just the form, and then we'll put it on for next. Just the approval. The just approval. The approval okay. is all, all we're being asked for. Uh, my my request for a more formal application yep. will come later. Yep. Okay. Okay. And then next year it'll be back on just straight consent yep. in the fall. We just wanted. To show okay, you what Mrs. It is. Have a refresher. Trans perfect bilingual testing. Sure. So TransPerfect, actually, we already use um, when we need interpretation services within the district. We were talking about the IU, and that's actually the agreement that we work under is an agreement that the IU has with TransPerfect, not one that we have directly. Um, but this particular program, so the reason that we are showing you this contract individually is because this testing component is not part of the contract that we work under the IU for. So what this would do would actually be allow us to, um, any employee who would like to go through the testing, um, through the assessment to determine that their uh, language skills are proficient, um, could do that. Um, we would actually pay for the test. And then, for example, if it were maybe an hourly employee who's maybe a secretary in a building or an admin assistant in a building, um, we would actually um, increase their pay rate by 50 cents. Um, so uh, because we're going to use that service um, it, within their job duties. And um, so this is actually something that is new to us, um, but not new, uh, not a new concept. Um, School District of Lancaster already has it in place. That's actually documentation of how we found out about it came from School District of Lancaster. 
And that's essentially what they do is they give the, the 50 cents. So um, we know that we have a couple of people um, that are either existing or new hires um, that would be eligible. Uh, so we're going to offer the program to them. Um, certainly if they pass the assessment, um, then you know, we would, we would uh, add the 50 cents um, to the rate. Uh, the nice part about it, I think, is it's probably good because we have a limited group of people uh, right now. Um, those people get hit pretty hard when we need those services. Um, you know, again, we use TransPerfect when we can, but sometimes you just need to grab somebody and start start going. Um, and so this is going to give us more folks within the district uh, to be able to have those skills. And then we have the assessment that we know that the, the, the competency is there um, for whatever the language they choose to be assessed on. Uh, so. Uh, you know, agreement's pretty simple. Um, we, our intent was to put it on uh, for consent next week um, so that we could move forward because, like I said, we do have a couple of people that um, we would like to, to get started right out of the gate. Explain this to me. They're assessed to see how competent their English skills are, right? Not their English their skills, their other language, language skills, other, so other language skills. So Spanish, French, German, what, whatever it would be, whatever we would need. I mean, Spanish is going to be the most... Um, probably the most used one for us. Okay, so this is just to verify their confidence in that language. Correct. And then it's like a certification that they have? Kind of. It it's kind of it's basically, one. yeah, they do the assessment and they basically give us something back that says the person is, has passed the assessment. Okay. And so then we can use that person, use that person's skills with a comfort level to know that, you know, that... So it's, it's like almost like in-house translation services that we will now have correct. Yeah. from our new employee. Okay. That, that was my and they question. get the benefit what, of 50 what, cents what are more we using Correct. Mm -hmm. And could they also say that they were, like, on, on a, a resume, they could say, I mm -hmm. was certified as yes. bilingual. So there's that benefit, too, at least. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. As a matter of fact, one of the people that we would be offering it to um, had that on their resume when they applied to us that they had already done it, so... My concern is I didn't understand how we were going to use them after, but I get yep. it now. Okay. Any other okay. questions? And like you had said, so for some people, they're already being utilized this way anyway. So all that we're really doing is saying, thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. We're going to test you and say thank you, and here's 50 mm -hmm. cents. Mm -hmm. okay. Works for me. Okay. All right. Mr. Johnson, track resurfacing. Sure, good evening. Uh, this is for the um, professional services to prepare the, to prepare the bid documents for the the track resurfacing project. So this is just a documentation charge. Yeah, this is just to put the, the bid documents together. They came out there the, to do a survey. They come out to do a survey. They put together the bid documents. Uh, they assist with the bidding of the project and then the oversight of the project once it's under construction as well. And what's the timeline expected for this? Uh, would be this coming summer. So we would we have a we would look to be out to bid next month. Do you have an estimate of what we think it was going to cost? Or uh, I I did. We had, a, we had a, a budget number. I I had it in the like three hundred twenty-five thousand, three hundred fifty thousand range to do it. Um, and then I had also put in my budget was like twenty five thousand for the the engineering cost to prepare the documents. Yeah, sir. Yeah. This is less than what you would budget. It is. Yep. How much did you budget for that? Uh, I want to say oh, off the top of my head. I want to, I want to say three hundred twenty five thousand. No, no, no. I'm yeah. meant for the yeah. documentation. Oh, twenty five thousand. Okay. Yeah. So we're we're under that. So. Any questions? Mr. Yes, Kelly. I'll jump in. <laughs> so, the the track. So, a couple of the reasons why I am the naysayer on the track. It's a couple of reasons. Number one, when we redid the, all the fields and we were doing everything, etc., not one time did anybody come and say, "Hey, your track's about five years due to be replaced." Didn't have that conversation. Everything seemed to be fine, and we were good when we were ripping everything out. The track mm -hmm. was fine. I've walked the track. I'm not seeing cracks. I'm not seeing anything. Now let me finish. Right. Don't let me finish. Okay. Okay. Not seeing anything not level. It's still a little bit squishy. I'm not a track expert. But when I look at it, it looks fine. It feels fine. And can we spend $300,000 doing other things? When we had a huge debate over a $12,000 volleyball team that we wanted to sponsor. Now we're just going to throw $325,000 on a new track. 
because we think we need it, that's my concern. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? It, uh, it's fair. It, it is actually not a, a new track. It's a pulling up of the inside lane. I don't know if you walked a track, um, you saw that the inside lane is, is a different texture than the, the majority of the track. That inside lane was done when we did the, um, the turf field in 2014. How uh, many lanes was in it? <coughs> it one really only did one. One. Yeah, it came in as one lane. Uh, what has happened though is there's a separation occurring between the exist the track that remained and that new material. So water is getting down in there and deteriorating the the pavement beneath. So as far as track thickness, the material that's there is is of a good thickness. So we're actually not going to pull all that up. Uh, we are going to redo that that inside lane material and get that down and redone. Uh, because it's the the water has infiltrated under it, so we have some delamination going on okay. with that. So that's a concern over time. Uh, the the D areas would also get recoded, and then the, the the entire track would would be recoded and then restriped and and all of that. Uh, that will get us probably another fifteen plus years out of it until another something additional needs to be done. If we would tear the track down to asphalt. Um, we may end up having to redo asphalt, and that number could be at least double what we're looking at right now, just to do a recoding and and rework that inside lane. So, will this come into OPEX? We can certainly go back and change the action, but the reason that Ken brought this forward was because we had already approved the project in January to do it. So, again, if you if we no, don't is that want was that the list that was presented? I don't yeah. remember us approving it. I thought it was more of a yeah, no, it was an FYI. January, in January, we, and certainly we can. Good. We haven't done anything, so yeah. we can go back. But we did actually approve it at the January 18th meeting, which is why Ken went ahead and, and okay. got this right. engineering um, stuff to to do it. I don't want to be the lone voice. What do we What do we think? Since I'm throwing it out there, the only thought I had, and this kind of goes back to what you were bringing up about the. The loan side of stuff too, is this that that three hundred twenty five thousand that cost that is that that's still something we have to get a loan on or is that pulled out of the budget or does that go into that number that we're trying to? Yeah. So right now um, it is in the general fund budget. Okay. One of the things that we have done historically is looked at some of those bigger ticket items that have a longer life to them and said, can we actually pay for that out of our capital budget? Now, I've been trying to like hold on to that capital budget, as Scott said, so that if we get to the end of the project, so we need like $3.8 million to finish everything, that 3.8 is sitting there. Um, however, in, in this particular case, you know, for the 300000 I would, I personally will wait until we sort of get into the April, May budget time frame, um, because let's just say we get 300000 from the state and we're like, oh, well, there we go. We can just go ahead and do it, leave it in the general fund budget. If not, and we say we're 300000 short, instead of raising additional taxes to cover that 300000 then we could actually pull it out of the capital, and then we'd have you know, $3.5 million instead of $3.8 million in capital. Gotcha. So, I, uh, although I'm concerned about what the final cost may be, because nowadays you never know what anything's going to end mm -hmm. up costing, adding 15 years to the track is huge. Okay. It is huge. 15 years is a lot of money over... A lot of time, and uh, we we have done uh, preventive work on that track before, and it has mm -hmm. always paid off. We've done a sinkhole because we haven't had well sinkholes. We yeah. can't help. Yeah, um, uh, tearing up the entire track and redoing it is something I don't want to see us have to do. And, and I don't either. And that's this is and, that preventative and we, and this will stop step that. to do that. Right. It's you know a dollar a dime now saves a dollar later. So will this. Firm, do an assessment of the track and tell you yes. what you need to do. They, they have actually already come out and, and given right. recommendations okay. on what to do. And we talked about options and, and what's the best course of action at this okay. time. So he has he's also the, the company that comes out and, and conditions our turf fields, uh -huh. um, cleans them all up, and then uh, also does the GMAX testing that's required for those. So that's his business. He deals with okay. turf fields and tracks. And, all right. Okay. These are expensive facilities. You have to maintain them or they'll just break you. Right. But it's not a roof. 
We're sorry. It's not a roof. <laughs> no, it's not, not a, roof. a no. <laughs> it's a track. Yeah, well, if we have to big expenses. If they come back and say if this thing's right, we have to tear it up. That is all another world. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The only thing I ask is I would like to see what the report is back here, um, and then just have another discussion about the cost. Okay, we can do that. Is that fair? We can do that. About what we're going to uh, we're pay. We for have it. a plan. This is how much it's going to cost. Are we good? Rather than just seeing it embedded in a spreadsheet with. A hundred other things, robots and yeah, well, things When do you expect that, that documentation that kind of to be available? Uh, I'll give them a call tomorrow and I'm sure they can put something together quickly. Oh, oh okay. it's about ready. Uh, they're they're ready to go as soon as we okay. get approval to go. Okay. So, because you said they already performed the assessment. They, he's already come out and did an assessment. So they already know the scope of the work yeah. that needs to be done. Okay. Okay. So. Okay, thank you. Anything to keep Mr. Uh, happy, right? Me? Yeah. Well, keep me happy? Yeah. It's probably not a bad thing. Got to keep my. Probably not. It's a good thing. See what I have to sip it? This is so okay. The China agenda is posted. If you have any questions, speak up now. If not, is there anyone from the public here again we'd like to address the board? Does the board have any announcements or initiatives to bring up? Should have, I should have mentioned this before, but really good Winter Pops concert with the band and orchestra. So I attended that. Cool Journey tribute at the end, which was different, which I thought was really neat. A good choir concert mm -hmm. that they also had. That was neat to go see. Uh, let's not forget, we had the Sound of Music coming up. That's the spring musical, so tickets are available online. And all this craziness in the world, I've always said this a hundred times, but it's nice to see instruments in kids' hands. So, big supporter of the arts. I think, I think it was great. You're right, that bit of it on the beginning of the meeting, but I'd rather, I have, yep. I'd rather have it now than not. We were kind of going quick, and you I'd caught rather me. have it now than not. Yep. Have it. That's okay. Yeah, in the middle school play, the. It's coming up. Hurricane Smith yeah. in the Garden of the Golden Monkey. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I thought it was a little obscure titles to play. So I think that's it awesome. is wonderful to see the stage is open, the musical. Yes, it is. And the concert is. open again. Yes, it is. Um, absolutely. And just to make a, a shout out to Jonathan Groff for popping yeah. in yes. and, and seeing all the, the uh, theater groups. Yeah. Yeah. Huge, huge cool thing. Yeah, John, so, John has come back a number of times yes, and done things yeah. like that. He's a uh, a very dedicated alum. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, it was fun to come home and hear my eighth grade daughter and my wife screaming at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> That's neat. Okay. I felt like small potatoes that moment. If that is all, all there is, I will take a motion to adjourn to executive session for legal and personnel reasons. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourned.